and welcome back to the Fortitude Fix. I hope you're well. My name is Deshauna and in today's video I am going to be sharing with you my birth plan and the top 10 things that you need to include in your birth plan. So if you're interested in hearing all of those things go ahead and just keep on watching. Before we begin, I wanted to just introduce myself to some of the new subscribers and fan members that we have over here. Hi again, welcome, my name is Deshauna. So if you are interested in mommy related content and lifestyle videos, recipes thrown in here and there, we just have a lot of fun over here. I am a health educator and a birth doula and I'm the owner of The Fortitude Fix. If any of that sounds interesting and fun, go ahead and click that subscribe button and make sure that you stick around for a while so you don't miss anything. As you can tell by my thumbnail as well as the title of this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my birth plan and this is the actual one that I used. I printed off another copy. It just doesn't have our like full names on it and things like that. But I will share this with you and then I will share with you the 10 things that you need to include in your birth plan. If you are interested in the layout of this, go ahead and look in the description box. I have left a link for you to grab this exact template that I created. You are able to download it for free and it is a fillable PDF. So that means that once you have downloaded it, you are able to type directly into the document and then print it out or you can print out a blank version and write in your preferences that way. Yes, these are birth preferences. I think it is very important to understand that nothing will really ever go as planned, especially when we are looking and experiencing the topic of babies and birth and labor and delivery. So I don't want us to get too caught up in the term plan of like this is how it has to go, but more so around preferences. And the reasoning behind this is yes, things can change and it can change at a moment's notice. But it is also very important to recognize what your options are, what your choices are, and have preferences so that you can speak to your care team about what those preferences are to make sure that they are doing the most that they can for you to make this an amazing and memorable positive experience for you. I'm going to get into the 10 things that you have to have in your birth preferences and that is what are your preferences for pain management? Do you plan to have an epidural? Do you plan to go without? Are there other pain medications that you are okay using that aren't an epidural or not? So really thinking through what that looks like and figuring out what you are okay with and what you aren't okay with, with the understanding that some of those things might change, right? Because of medical necessity or, you know, you just change your mind. <laughs> the second thing that I will say that you need to have is who your support people are. So if you have a doula, if you have your partner with you, if you have your parent or your partner's parent or whoever you have in the room with you, make sure that your care team knows who they are. I am not a nurse but I do know a lot of nurses and I have been in the labor and delivery room with my clients as a doula and it really does help to know who it is that I'm speaking to and to address them by name. So that's a really good idea to just put that up there on your birth preference sheet of who's gonna be with you in the room. For me, in my experience, I knew because of COVID that I wasn't gonna be able to have anyone other than my husband as my support person. So his name was listed. The third thing that I want to share that you should have in your birth preferences is what is your preference for the placenta and or the cord blood after delivery. A lot of people may choose to encapsulate their placenta and ingest it. Later on they dehydrate it and it's a whole process and you know use it as a way to get extra nutrients. Some folks will want to save baby's cord blood that comes with the placenta. There's a lot of things that can be done with the stem cells and research. So adding that information is important because that will then signal your care team to make sure that you have the kit with you for taking the placenta home or getting it encapsulated or uh, collecting the cord blood. The next thing that you absolutely need to have is any type of trauma that you have experienced that could hinder your comfortability in this moment. In an example that I have is a friend of mine had a miscarriage and it was a really tough time for them. 
what they kept hearing was your body is made for this your body can do this and after the miscarriage they felt as if their body had failed them so if you have a care team that maybe knows your history of miscarriage how it impacted you if a certain phrase like your body was made for this is a trigger for you or if it brings up negative feelings you can let them know hey this is something i don't want to hear i'm all for the cheerleading and the hoorah you can do it but maybe just that phrase is something that puts me back in a in a negative headspace that I don't want to be so just letting them know that maybe there's some things that have happened to you a lot of folks may be scared of needles <laughs> uh, a lot of folks may have issue with somebody attending their vaginal area in their region and so letting me know if a check is coming up and not just kind of coming in and, and checking me, right? Those are things that you would want to put in your birth preferences. The next thing that you absolutely have to list is what is your plan for labor? Do you want to have a bouncing like yoga ball, pregnancy birthing ball with you? Do you want Pitocin? Are you interested in aromatherapy and essential oils? I know for me, I wasn't allowed to have my essential oil diffuser, but I was able to bring in my actual essential oils to smell and it was great. So. What are the things that you want during your labor process before things speed up? Next, you need to list out what your C-section preferences are. So if for whatever reason things change and you are wanting a vaginal delivery but things move toward the C-section route, what are the preferences that you have surrounding cesarean delivery? Whether that's you want your partner present, whether that is you want immediate skin to skin right after, et cetera, et cetera. So listing that out just in case. Another thing that will be really important is if you have any cultural or religious practices that you think your care team would need to know, we'll get into my birth plan in just a little bit, but my husband and I are Christian and we put in a little note about that. So we'll get into that momentarily. So any type of preference or things that you wish not to happen for cultural or religious reasons, making sure that that is noted in your birth preference sheet. Next up would be, what are your plans for feeding? What are your preferences for feeding your newborn? Do you plan to breastfeed? Would you want to immediately supplement? As a doula, of course, I am an advocate for breastfeeding, but I do recognize that it is hard, and there are some things that could prevent that from happening right straight out of the gate. Of course, even if you don't plan to breastfeed, it would be... A good idea to even just try if possible because you want to kind of bring in that milk even if you plan to like pump or something like that but again to each his own there's a lot of stigma around this topic in general but if you plan to breastfeed if you are interested in that if you want to get more information talk to your care team but really just have something written down about your preferences for feeding. What are your plans for the newborn once they arrive? Do you want immediate skin to skin? Do you want to forego the ointment and the vitamin K shot? Do you want to do skin to skin with you and then your partner before they do the weight and the length and all of that stuff? So making sure you have your preferences for that so that your care team is aware of what should be happening right after a delivery. And the last thing I will say that needs to be on your birth preferences is anything someone may need to know for your added safety or your added comfort. There you may not want a lot of talking and loud noises. You may not want the lights to be on super bright all of the time. You may want someone to come in and speak to you in a very calming tone as opposed to you know coming in and starting a whole kind of ruckus from outside and bringing in that very lively energy. Maybe you want it really really calm and centered and yeah writing that down is is super important okay let's get in to the good stuff all right I'm gonna go over my birth preferences I do recommend that your birth preferences is one sheet I mean one so there's nothing on the back it is one sheet I decided to break mine up between labor birth and then after the birth you can decide if you want to add other things or take away things but that's how I decided to break it down and as you can see I left it in like not even sentence form but just like statement <laughs> like this is what I want uh, this is what I wish to happen so 
For my labor, I knew that I was going to try for a vaginal delivery. So I wrote that. I wrote down that I wanted dim lights and a quiet atmosphere. I wrote that I wanted to explore natural pain management methods and also that I would ask for any pain medication if I wanted it. I didn't want to be offered the pain medication. I wanted to then ask for it because at that point I knew that I needed it. I didn't want to continue to answer the question of like, do you want it now? Do you want it now? Do you want it now? I just wanted everyone to know that I would ask if I needed it. I put here during labor that if my husband and I were praying that that there was limited noise and limited movement. I do understand that some things had to happen and they were medically necessary, but if they did come in, at which point my husband and I were praying just to kind of observe that, wait for that, it wouldn't be too long and then they can continue what they were doing. I don't think anyone came in during a time that my husband and I were praying, but I wanted it to be listed. I didn't want people coming in, making noise, asking questions if my husband and I are in a moment of prayer. I let them know that I wanted to have a few vaginal exams. I didn't want them to continue checking me like too, too often. Luckily, the place where I delivered already had some of these things as standard protocol. So that's why you may not hear some of the things that I listed in my tips in this document because they were already standard practice. Plus, it was COVID time. So I didn't have a ton of other direction around like who my doula was or who my mom was or my mother-in-law or anything like that. So just tailor it to you, to the situation, to the time that you're giving birth. And then I put for labor that I wanted to be intermittently monitored. I didn't want to be strapped down to monitors because I wanted increased mobility because I was working for natural pain management methods. I wanted to be able to use my ball. I wrote that down. My flameless candles, my essential oils. I wanted to be able to move my position, stand up, sit down, get on all fours, be on my back, which did not feel good for me in my situation. I'm going to be uploading my birth story very soon. So yeah, interesting, interesting stuff. Okay, so that's what I put for my labor. It's pretty... Pretty short, simple, sweet. When it comes to birth, I said that I wanted my partner at my side. I did ask my husband if he wanted to be front and center <laughs> to watch his daughter come into the world up in the front where the uh, nurse midwife was, but he decided to be at my side. So I wrote that in there. He did see he was, you know, doing one of these kind of situations, but he was there supporting me up here as well. And it was a lovely. I wanted instruction on when and how long to push. One of the reasons is because I do very well with direct sentiments, I guess you will. <laughs> like if someone says, hey, we need to be ready at seven o'clock, I'm going to do my best to be ready at seven o'clock. Maybe that was a bad example because, you know, gotta be, <laughs> gotta be dressed. Uh, anyways, uh, I wanted to be instructed for when and how long to push. I did not want to hurt myself in terms of like tearing or pushing too hard or whatever. So I listed that out. I wanted a calm uh, environment and lowered voices during labor. I put that as well. But here for birth, I don't want screaming, push, push, one, two. Like I didn't want any of that. Just speak to me normally. <laughs> so that's what I put. I requested a mirror if available. And yes, a mirror was available. So I was able to see my daughter crowning. I was able to kind of reach down and help pull her out. I was able to see my progress with each push. And it just gave me that motivation. It was really amazing. And then I put on the side in case of cesarean delivery, there were really only three things that I wanted. If for whatever reason, my dream for vaginal delivery didn't take place, I had a small section for what I would prefer if we had to do a cesarean and delivery so the first thing was I wanted my husband present the whole time I understand that there's some protocol and this and that and the partner has to be outside and can't come until the last minute like I wanted my husband present and I made that very clear I did not have a cesarean delivery but that was the first preference of mine the second was clear draping so if they had clear draping available to cover you know how they kind of lay you down and then they work from waist down and you know you and partner maybe are up here from waist up I wanted it to be clear so that I could see what was happening that is an option if you're interested in something like that go ahead and ask uh, the location where you're delivering if they have that as an option and then the third thing was reunification and skin to skin as soon as possible i did not want baby to be taken away or going to the nursery or anything like that if we were to do a cesarean section i really did want our family unit to have that time and that bonding time as soon as possible 
uh, after delivery. And then for after the birth, so as soon as my daughter arrived, what was gonna happen from then until we left the hospital, I put that I wanted skin to skin as soon as possible with my daughter. Luckily, that was something that they do naturally. In fact, they postpone everything. So my family was like, oh my gosh, how much does she weigh? How long is she? Did it? We did not know for, I want to say, the first hour, and that was because we were doing skin to skin, and they did all of that before any procedures. I thought that was really great. I wanted my husband to cut the umbilical cord, which he did. I wanted to delay all procedures and testing until after that golden hour, and so again, this was something that my place of delivery did anyway it was standard for them but i wanted to make sure that it was listed just in case i said that if separation was medically necessary so if they needed to take my baby somewhere and they didn't but you know going into this i was like if it's medically necessary my husband will accompany our baby uh, yeah i've 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 seen those uh lifetime movies okay I also put that I would like to meet with lactation. It was told to me that lactation really meets with those who are having issues with breastfeeding, but regardless, I wanted to meet with lactation, whether I had issues or not. I did, and I actually met with them like two or three times while I was there. I was only there for 24 hours, but uh, I took full advantage, and I advise that you do the same. And the last thing was I plan to breastfeed. So this was my literal birth preferences sheet that I took with me. I had a copy for myself I, in my purse, which I never even touched while I was at the hospital, but I also had a copy in my husband's backpack. So if you wanted to check out my what's in my hospital bag video, I will link that. I did have it there, and then I think there was already one in my file at the hospital where I delivered so yeah Whew, that is it so please 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 go ahead and check the description box for your free blank copy of this so that you can add in your own birth preferences if you have any additional questions for me if there's any topics that came up in this video that you want to learn more about go ahead and leave that down in the comments below let me know what you think and what was in your birth preferences list or what you plan to have leave me a comment i would love to hear from you don't forget to subscribe to this channel and i will see you all right back here in my next video thank you all so so much for watching and remember to always Fill your cup. Bye.